The Congressional Black Caucus is celebrating its 50th anniversary. Thirteen members of the House of Representatives formed the nonpartisan group in 1971. The first black congresswoman, Shirley Chisholm, was part of the inaugural caucus. She was the only woman. Then-President Richard Nixon initially refused to meet with the Congressional Black Caucus. The group made national headlines when members boycotted Nixon's first State of the Union address. Nixon relented and met with them. To this day, the caucus has a powerful voice on Capitol Hill. CBS News political analyst Antoine Seawright joins me now with more. Antoine, the founding members of the Congressional Black Caucus really changed America's perception of black voters and their power there on the Hill. Tell us a bit about how they've shaped American democracy in the last 50 years. Well, happy Sunday, Lana. Uh, 50 years ago, uh, 13 troublemakers, as John Lewis once described them to me, decided to defy gravity. Uh, 13 black and black members who had shared values and shared interests uh, came together to make one of the most consequential decisions of their day because they knew not what America was, not what America uh, had been, but what America could be was predicated on their success in the United States Congress. And so for 50 years, uh, the Congressional Black Caucus has not only been the conscience of the, co of the Congress, but they have served as the conscience of the country. And I think it's so important. What started out as 13 is now 55 and growing, includes six committee chairs, a number of subcommittee chairs, and arguably the most powerful force in the United States Congress. There is not one piece of legislation, Lana, that can be passed in the United States Congress without the stamp or approval of the Congressional Black Caucus. Antoine, as you were explaining that our viewers were seeing uh, retro 1970s footage with a baby-faced Congressman Charlie Rangel, and uh, and among oh. the things that we saw there was a sign that said that was talking about passing the Voting Rights Act. That's still an issue today. So, how has the Congressional Black Caucus tackled voter suppression over the years, and what is their position on some of the recent efforts by Republican legislatures to make it more difficult to vote? Well, Lana, the one thing we know about history, if we're not informed by history, uh, we are bound to repeat history. And the truth of the matter is the same battles that those 13 members fought 50 years ago are the same battles we're fighting today. In fact, uh, one could argue that those battles have become more intense and in some cases worse. The truth of the matter is the black vote, the net worth of the black vote has become so critical and so important to the country. And that's why you see 48 states uh, with several hundred pieces of legislation filed, some passed to silence and suffocate black voters at the ballot box. I was so proud that the Congressional Black Caucus led the efforts to pass the John R. Lewis uh, Voting Rights Act out of the United States House of Representatives. I know there's a compromise being discussed in the Senate uh, that was introduced just last week. And I truly believe that you will find the Congressional Black Caucus putting their weight in their arms and embracing whatever comes out of the Senate because we are operating under what Dr. King describes as the fierce urgency of now when it comes to voting rights in this country. As they were 50 years ago, they're still under attack. Well, Antoine, you know how you mentioned that it started off with 13, it has continued to grow, but even though the Congressional Black Caucus is a nonpartisan organization formally, it's not growing with Republican members. Currently, no Republicans are part of the CBC. I know you're a Democratic strategist, and so you wear that hat most <laughs> often, but I'm also wondering, Antoine, if it would benefit black Americans of all different political persuasions if the CBC actually tried harder to engage Republican viewpoints and, uh, and encourage Republican members to join. Well, Lana, I'll tell you this, just because a member is a Congressional Black Caucus member, that does not mean they do not receive uh, and garner and earn, quite frankly, Republican support. It's not just Democrats. It's not just black voters who vote for CBC members or in their districts. And so I would argue that they do engage with those who may have different viewpoints or who may not have the same letter in front or behind their name. When it comes to joining the actual body of the CBC, there are rules that govern the way the caucus operates. 
if a Republican member, I truly believe if they shared their values and they share, I think, uh, the focus of the Congressional Black Caucus, then I think they would have been embraced. The modern day Republican Party does not reflect the shared values of the 55 members of the Congressional Black Caucus. And that could be part of the reason why you do not see a Republican in the membership of the current day uh, Congressional Black Caucus. Well, since the Congressional Black Caucus was created, no Democrat has ever become president without the group's support. You mentioned how important the CBC is in terms of legislation, but it's also in terms of the Oval Office. Tell our viewers how the organization has become so influential, particularly in the Democratic Party. Well, it's because of the work of the CBC and the results that they yield session after session. It gives black voters, the most consequential and the most loyal voting bloc in the country, a reason to show up and show out at the polls. Lana, you and I have talked about this before. In any given election, black people are casting a survival vote. And the truth of the matter is the country oftentimes depends upon and lean on black voters to save this country. We saw that in the 2008 historic election of Barack Obama and in the 20. Uh, 20 election without black voters, neither one of those elections would have been possible for President Obama or now President Biden and Vice President Harris. And so that's why this voting block is so important. And that's why the work of the CBC is so critical. And I applaud them for being consistent advocates for 50 years and being good stewards of the black vote. Antoine C. Wright, always a pleasure having you on. Thanks. Happy Sunday, love.